Here we go then, boys and girls. A brand new chapter of Non-Lethal Legend FM24 starts right here because this is episode one with the second club in this year's save, Burton and Albion. There were some subtle clues around and about the place that I'm now managing Burton Albion. And not only am I managing Burton Albion, I am managing a Burton Albion that have an extraordinary amount of money. We've got five million pounds to spend. I'm giddy with excitement. Less giddy about the fact we've actually had to drop down the league table from Tamworth to join Burton, who, money aside, have fallen on hard times. And if you want to know how we ended up here from Tamworth, there's a whole playlist on the channel showing you that section of the story. But this is a great jumping on point. If you are new, all you really need to know, we managed Tamworth. We got them a couple of promotions into League Two. And now we've jumped ship to their Staffordshire rivals, Burton. I'm a monster. And in case you were wondering just how close together these two clubs are, worry not, I've prepared a map less than 25 miles between Tamworth and Burton, basically separated by Twycross Zoo. We've got, <laughs> we've got, we're, we're each defending a side of Twycross Zoo. Um, I guess Tamworth also have the power of Drayton Manor on their side, whereas Burton has a bunch of breweries. I think that's what's in. That's what that's what's in Burton, isn't it? But 25 miles. You could argue we don't even have to get a new house. However, we do live above an ironing shop in Tamworth and we're now earning full-time football money. So you can be sure, even though we don't necessarily need to, we are going to move house. So I have checked with a non-specific mortgage calculator and based on my new salary of £1,000 a week or £52,000 a year, I can now borrow up to £247,000, which should be enough for an actual house. Or if it takes my fancy, a post office, because it looks like for £240,000, we can buy a post office that includes a shop. That would have been ideal while I still had to have a part-time job outside of football to pay the bills. But I'm a full-time football manager now. I don't need no post office to pay the bills. So I think probably this one fits our requirements perfectly. Um, £240,000 looks nice and shiny and new. Look at that beautiful kitchen. They're having flowers for tea. They've got one of those fridges that you can get water and or ice out of. Outdoor chairs. Two different varieties of this is wealth, boys and girls. Goodness me, we don't want a virtual tour. Lovely bush as well. Is wood cladding back? I feel like maybe it's not, but what I can see is on the other three walls, we have got chairs, more chairs. Look, again, variety chairs, three three individual chairs, and then a bench chair. They've got chairs all... Ooh, that's a horrible piece of art. I mean, we've got to bin that off. That looks like that's straight out of the range and that just doesn't sit well with me. They've got plants in the bathroom. Genuine zebra skin towel as well. Enormous looking bed. They haven't fitted the towel, the uh, the curtains very well, have they? they all, all the way down. To, they're dragging on the floor. I'd stand on them constantly, but I do appreciate a cactus on the window still. Another terrible piece of... I mean, this is all horrible art from the range, which, I mean, this is very much a developer has put all this in. Nobody lives in this house as it is currently. That's a cardboard cutout of a of an Apple Mac. Um, what use is the shower gel over here when the bath's over, over there, or you've got a glass door in that... Sometimes people, I'm going to have to make some changes, but even with the changes that I'm going to have to make, it looks lovely. We have a real house. That's where we live. We've moved up in the world. For anyone who was questioning whether I was right to leave Tamworth and join Burton, that is your evidence that I was right. Because even if we fail on the pitch, we've got a house. But obviously, in an ideal world, we also, you know, don't fail on the pitch. And this is the situation that Burton find themselves in as I join them on the 1st of December 2025. Fresh off the back of a relegation last season. If we have a look at um, previous seasons, you can see there was a 14th place finish mid-table in League One, then a 22nd place relegation finish and very much an expectation that they'd go straight back up again. But after 20 games, finding themselves in ninth place in League Two. The media still think they're strong favourites to go back up automatically. Remember, in League Two, there are three automatic promotion spots plus the next four going to the playoffs. So we're only one point outside of the playoffs. Now, the board are... I mean, 
this this confused me because when I arrived, when I was at interview, the board expected me to get promoted. Now they're just looking for a top half finish, which literally means we can just do what we've been doing so far. We're already top half. I'm obviously not going to settle for a top half finish. Tamworth are up in an automatic promotion spot and presumably Tamworth are going to fall apart now without me. So there's an promo- automatic promotion spot up for grabs. We've got 11 points to make up, more than half the season to go. Our goal now is to finish above Tamworth. Ideally, we both get promoted. That would be lovely. But whatever happens, we need to make sure we finish above Tamworth just to just to make sure the naysayers aren't saying nay because it makes me sad when that happens. Financially, there's £5 million in the bank, although it is expected to disappear at a rate of about a million pounds per season. And the board definitely want me to hurry that process along. Um, they've given me a, a transfer budget of over £3 million pounds. Um, Although, I mean, we can we can move this around as needed. I'm fairly sure last time I looked at this, we were spending more than £75,000 a week, which is why I had to take money from the transfer budget and put it in the wage budget. It seems like it's magically fixed itself. I'm not going to argue. All I've done is accept the job and then... Uh... I'm confused. I'm not going to let the confusion get me down. I'm a happy little chappy. Uh, but this is this is our team. And if we have a look who our star men are, who we're likely to be building around, Nigel Lonwick um, is a centre-back who is probably going to be a pretty important player for us. He joined on a free transfer from Wolves this summer just gone. And uh, despite being joining a team that is very much in the decline, seems to be one of the bright points of this relatively young-ish squad. Certainly, there's not loads and loads of old men. I would say that's a fairly young squad for a football manager, AI-generated one. Um, his defensive partner and our second best player, Jonathan Tomkinson, also 23 years old, also joined on a free transfer this summer, this time from Norwich. It looks like there was a big, big clear out in the summer. This is probably why there was so much money to spend. Um, if we go back, no, nope, there wasn't. Nope, there's never been a big clear out. I don't really understand where the money's come from then. Did I did did a did a rich person come in and get involved? Nope. I genuinely don't know why we've got so much money to spend. I am not going to argue about it, and I'm going to hope they just let me spend it and don't notice what's going on. We also have in our three and a half star players another centre back, Sam Hughes. Um, also a three and a half star player. He's been at Burton four years, but this does suggest, as much as it pains me to say it that with our three or three of our five best players being centre-backs, we might have to play a three at the back system, at least initially, because what I'm not seeing here is anyone who's going to score the goals. We've got a couple of decent central midfielders as well. Rakeem Harper um, has been here for the last couple of years. He's actually wanted by Falkirk. We've got a month until the transfer window opens. We've also got Joe Powell, who can play centre mid or defensive mid. He's also been here for a long time. So these are League One quality players. Uh, Paul Smith... Smythe? Smith, probably. Uh, Smith with a Y can play wide on either side, and he joined from QPR last season. But who actually scores the goals in this team? The best striker is Cole Stockton, who's 31 years old and has only scored five goals all season. Got 10 last year in League One. This season's top scorer is Joe Powell out of central midfield. I think it's pretty clear where the problem is in this squad. They don't score enough goals. So is that matched up with what the league table shows us? If we go into the more detailed version of the league table, um, we've, I mean, we've scored 27 goals. There is nobody above us in the league with a goals with a goals for that low. And in fact, a lot of the teams below us have scored more goals than we do as well. We're pretty solid defensively. Only 23 goals conceded. The only teams that have conceded fewer, Tamworth, at Tamworth, Wrexham and Doncaster. Um, but as far as goals go, we are well down the list for goals scored. Bottom half of the table for goals scored. So it's clear what we need to do. We need to work out how to score goals and maybe playing a back three isn't the way to do that. It looks like actually earlier in the season, before the previous manager was sacked, that's exactly what he was doing. A five, a five at the back with a DM. I mean, what a mega coward. Uber coward. Um, and then the uh, the... 
caretaker manager has come in, switched to a 4-2-3-1, and it has turned results around. So maybe it's not the brightest idea for me to switch straight back round to playing a back five again that clearly wasn't working before. Um, especially if you look at this again, um, this guy can play right back if need be. Maybe we play him at right back. Can we see what role he's been playing in lately? He's been doing exactly that. He's been playing right back as an inverted fullback. So I think we try and stick to what has been working for the uh, for the guy who was in caretaker charge. Is he still at the club? Um, if we have a look at who was... So can we see who the caretaker manager was? We can't. That seems unusual that we can't see who the caretaker manager was. Um, do I have staff? Oh, God, we don't have any staff. <laughs> it's got it, it's going to be fine. So first order of business is probably staff, then identify a striker or two to sign. We've obviously got loads of money. I mean, the money that we've got there should be more than enough for us to be able to go out and get a striker who can get a, a whole ton of goals here in League Two. But I think what I'm going to do is have a proper look at the squad, work out a system that we're going to play, try and get some staff in place. Our first game is against Wrexham in six days. They are top of the league. That is a baptism of fire. Let me try and prepare myself for that. And I'll meet you... Uh, I'll meet you in Wrexham on Saturday. Maybe we'll get to meet Ryan Reynolds. Well, we've had a busy five days or so. I've got job adverts out for all of the staff members that we need, but nobody has applied yet, which is really handy. I have tried to offer my head of youth development, John Morling, former Peterborough uh, head of youth development, amongst other things. Uh, tried to offer him the job as assistant manager because he looks ideal. Um, he's not interested. He only wants to remain as head of youth development. So at the moment, we have no... No staff apart from him. Luckily, he's taking training. Um, he's helping me assess the squad and also helped identify a whole bunch of trialists to bring in. As you can see, there are a lot of free transfer players in at the club on trial. There's two of them that we're trying to sign permanently. Finn Azaz, because he can play in that attacking midfield position that will allow us to do a 4-2-3-1. You'll see in a moment. We we don't have anyone who can play there, so we can't really use that role at the moment. But Finn Azaz would fit in perfectly so hopefully he joins and i think we can register free transfers whenever i guess we'll find out soon um that's not the other there was another guy i was trying to sign he's obviously gone somewhere else because there was a left back as well but clearly he already decided to sign for somewhere else and leave because he's not there anymore so it's finn as as and this guy is uh he wants to leave so we're gonna let him leave jasper moon is hopefully on his way out of the club we've accepted some offers for him but um we uh we can't do the four two three one i also don't want to do the four the the back five because i'm not a coward uh so we're gonna go with a four two four it does mean we've got two big lumps up front and uh, Nimzik um, who is a target forward and Stockton who's a target forward we're doing a 4-2-3-1 with two target forwards it is I'm not proud of myself this is hideous we're also going away from home to top of the table Wrexham with a front four which also might be a really terrible idea I'm not sure how they were playing a 4-2-3-1 in those last couple of games because there isn't really anyone who can do it. Finn Azaz obviously can. Harper can, but needs to play deeper. Powell can, but needs to be on the left-hand side. There's theoretically players who can play there, but when you actually put other players in other positions, there's nobody left who can actually fit that role. So that's not ideal. So this is the team for the game against Wrexham. Our first game in charge of Burton. It's Whiteman in goal, a back four of Hamer, Moon, Hughes and Lonwick as the inverted fullback that I threatened to do previously. It's like being back in the... Uh, in the Cullen and Liebird um, inverted fullback days, we've got just another big boy on to help us with set pieces, which is ideal. And then it's Oshilaya. Is that how we say his name? Uh, Deji Oshilala, La, Oshilaya uh, alongside Harper in midfield and then Powell on the left, Smith on the right and then the two big boys, Stockton and Nimzik up front. I'm not really expecting to get anything out of this game. Um, I'm also struggling with the fact that obviously we don't have an assistant manager currently. So I'm going to have to actually do my own team talk, which is <laughs> utterly hideous. Uh, don't let our good run of form come to an end here. There you go. That motivated a couple of them. 
I need an assistant manager and I need one now. I can't live in a world where I have to do do my own team talks and take my own training and set my own opposition instructions and all these hideous things that I want absolutely no part of. Um, we are the ones in the yellow, as, as in the yellow shirt that's behind me there. Um, so we are on the attack right now. And in fact, we had an early opportunity there to take the lead. That would have been a lovely, lovely thing if we'd have been able to take the lead there early on. And we're actually looking quite comfortable on the ball in these early stages, which is reassuring. And we should be, really. Remember, we were in League One last year. To be fair, so were Wrexham. And according to the season preview, we were the two favourites for the title this season. Wrexham, obviously, have fulfilled their promise as title favourites, whereas we have had that rotten start mainly because we were basically playing a back six. I mean, that's that's what I can establish from what the previous manager was doing. A back five with a defensive midfielder for a team that's supposed to walk the league just seems like a, an insane piece of management that obviously didn't work. So hopefully, just by going a little bit more attacking and trying to get the best out of the players that we've got and plugging gaps with the like of Finn is as and then whoever we can bring in permanently in January, we've got... I mean, I, I was... I'd like to say we've got scouts out doing their thing. We don't have any scouts yet. So I've requested scout reports. I'm not actually sure who's going to do them because there are no scouts yet. Uh, but it's things are in place. As soon as some staff arrive, they've got tasks to be getting on with. In the meantime, Stockton doing good work holding the ball up. I mean, I guess that's the advantage of having the two big target men up front. They are going to hold the ball up nicely when it goes up to the Moon. Now forward to Harper and now Powell on the left-hand side. Back to Moon again and he plays it over the top for Hamer, the left-back to chase onto. Can he find the cross? Because we've got the big boys in the middle. He decides to have the shot, which is insanity. Just get the ball out wide and get crosses in because we've got... Uh, right, we're going all out with things. Oh my word, we've got an actual long throw merchant. I was just going to explain we're trying the long throws because we've got the big boys in the middle. I didn't expect to have someone who can hurl the ball all the way into the six-yard box. This long throw is going to be a weapon for us. He's come all the way over from left back to take that, so obviously it is a speciality of his. I've not seen a long throw like that on FM24. That was that was hugely dangerous and has led to the goal. I mean, it's absolute chaos in the penalty area, but it ends up getting turned home by Powell, and we are 1-0 up after half an hour. And we go again with set pieces, this time a corner. Powell looking for the far post. Hughes is there with a the header, and it just kind of skims across the top of the crossbar. But we look like we're useful from these set pieces. We've got a lot of big boys on the pitch. Obviously, the centre-backs, the, the big right-back, the two big boys up front. We are going to be a menace from set pieces. We've just asked the board if we can have a set piece coach and they've agreed to that as well. So that's another advert we've put out. So theoretically, we should get better at set pieces as time goes on. If you've been watching my Twitch save over in Turkey, which you should be, I'll be live on Twitch tonight if you want to come and see how we're getting on there and all the highlights are on the Lujo too. Um, but in that save, we have been doing some wonderful thing with, things with set pieces because we've had a set piece coach for a while. And as soon as you, as soon as you start getting you know, set piece coach bedded in and doing lots of work with set pieces some of the goals we've been scoring in that are sensational so fingers crossed we can start to do similar things here with Burton once we can get our set piece coach in for a moment there we had snuck up into the playoff positions as well which was nice to see Tamworth are losing away against Gateshead I did warn you all that Tamworth are going to start to tumble down the lead down the league without me I suspect it is going to start happening almost immediately and um, we're ahead on the scoreboard we certainly deserve it given how much we've created so I'm pleased I, I want to is there not a no there you go I don't want a hint of complacency that always used to be the the right answer years ago the last time I did my own team talks fingers crossed by the next match we'll have someone to come in and hold my hand and do them for me because we don't like to do the team talk poor old Tam we're 3-1 down now they are still just clinging on to the uh to the automatic promotion spot at the moment but I suspect not for much longer. We've absolutely dominated Wrexham here, which is very nice to see. The front two are pathetic. Uh, we're playing two strikers, which is pretty rare in FM24 anyway, and neither of them are creating anything. We've got other players who theoretically can play up front. Jaden Williams joined on a free transfer from Spurs in the summer. Does offer something a little bit different. And then Kia Svark is uh, a product of our own youth system. 
neither of them necessarily fill me with confidence. I think what we might do is try Williams alongside Stockton. I think he's, yeah, he can be an advanced one. He's actually reasonably quick, so does offer something slightly different. He might end up being my man in that role, and Jasper Moon is going to come off uh, for Tomkinson, and that might do me for now. We don't have huge depth to be able to make loads of changes. Um, although Mark Leonard, another free transfer signing in the summer, I think we can give him, give him a little bit of a look. He can come on for Deji, and we go to that, and hopefully manage to cling on because a result here in our first game definitely puts a marker down that I'm an incredibly talented football manager, which is obviously is the impression I want to make on these Burton fans. I've, I've impressed them already by getting the club tie, getting the club pin, getting all the gear. But what I really want is is a nice big win to go along with it. Right, we're going to take off Stockton. Spark is going to come on as well. Um, he wants to be a poacher when he's older. So uh, there you go. He can come on and be a poacher. So we've got, now gone with a poacher and an advanced forward. And then Daniel Adshed is going to be the final change, who is a... We paid quarter of a million pounds for this guy. He did play 41 times for us last year in the division above. So theoretically should be quite good so let's uh let's give him 10 minutes at the end of this match i mean there's there's spots available for anyone who wants to try and claim them we've not making any decisions yet on who's going to be who in this squad all we know is we've got like eight games before the january transfer window and we need to make up our mind during those eight games as well as bringing in all the right staff that we need to plug the gaps that we've got in the staff which is all of the gaps because Everything is a gap at the moment. Uh, but we need to be deciding who we're keeping, who we're letting go. There's a huge number of players in this squad who want to leave because we got relegated. I don't care if they all go. I don't mind if we completely rebuild this team. Um, but we do need to get an idea of what we need as a priority. And I think priority number one is going to be a striker. And that is frustrating in the 92nd minute. Referee, are we disallowing that? We are disallowing that. What a man. Oh, see, this is the advantage of being a club with money. We can pay off the ref. And we have scraped our way to a 1-0 win thanks to a long throw and a little bit of uh, a little bit of offside fortune. It's not enough to get us up into the playoff spots yet, but we are closing the gap, closing the gap on Tamworth, which is the big gap that I want to close. Nine points now between us and them. And fingers crossed we can continue this little run of form that we're in now um, and get us to January where we can really start leaving a making a mark leaving a stamp on this football club so i'll meet you in january and fingers crossed we'll have an idea of what we need to bring in to turn this into a team that can try and challenge for promotion if you've enjoyed that please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me subscribe to the channel for daily football manager videos and thank you very much for watching